Break here on RVNTV.TV. I'm your host, Renee Washington, and joining me from via Skype from Chicago is Erica Prosser. Erica, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. Glad to have you on the show. So, for those of you that do not know, I coached and, and um, got my master's degree from Lehigh University, and Erica is also a graduate of Lehigh, not soccer, but basketball team. And um, you were a graduate in 2011, and you were able to help the team win two Patriot League championships during your time there. What was what was that experience like for you being a conference champion? Yeah, it was it was the best four years of my life. Lehigh basketball was incredible. I made so many great friends. The coaching staff was really awesome. And actually, my junior year, the men's team also won the Patriot League championship. Um, so that was a really special year to share. Um, both championships across the team, so it was really cool. Oh, yeah, that's incredible. That was not the year that they beat Duke, was it? Or was that the no. year? No, it was the, that was after. Yeah, I'm getting my years mixed up here. <laughs> yeah, and that's not something that every college athlete has a chance to do. I mean, you every athlete steps on a team hoping to win their conference, make it to the NCAA tournament, but it's not it's not always possible. And in the Patriot League for Lehigh, you're playing a lot of tough teams. And for you guys to have two years of championships, I mean, what was kind of the, the chemistry and the values of your team in those, in those years that you were very successful? Yeah, so I came in, and my freshman year, we weren't really that good, honestly. And um, there, there was a kind of culture around um, settling for that. And so when my class came in, um, we, we had come from winning programs, winning high school programs, and right. we just wanted to do our best to kind of re-energize the group. And um, so we, we valued teamwork. We valued hard work. I learned a lot about just pushing myself and my teammates to the next level and working harder than we thought we were. Mm -hmm. um, and it really translated on the court. And um, we just, we did whatever it took to win games. And I think that made us really unique in the league. Yeah, yeah. And it was something that you guys really focused on. I mean, mentally, you have to have that winner's mentality, but also, you know, on the court in ter terms of performance, making sure that you were working hard before practice, after practice, getting extra shots up, you know, taking time to do maybe going to the weight room and getting some a lift in or something like that to really make sure you could perform day in and day out. Was that a yeah. common thing, thing for you guys? Yeah, um, we, like I said, we did whatever it took. We, we had some of the best, hardest working uh, team. I had some of the best, hardest working teammates in the league. And it was always coming in early to the gym and staying late and watching film. And we spent every second together, even off the court. And I think that off court chemistry mm -hmm. uh, definitely helped the on court performance as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that even on our show we talk a lot about is, you know, what goes into being successful. And for an athlete, it's doing whatever you have to do mentally and physically to be able to perform. And as a Lehigh women's basketball player in Stabler Arena, you not only had a successful four years, but then you went on to play overseas for a year in Iceland. And yeah. oh, I've never been there. <laughs> what is Iceland like? <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> and um, no, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I, it's kind of trendy right now. Everybody's um, hopping on planes to go to Iceland, but I definitely recommend it. It's, it's really easy to see the whole country in like mm -hmm. four to five days. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, but it was a really cool experience. And um, I, I was really lucky to have been able to play for a year professionally. Not everybody gets to do that. And I'm just thankful that my career at Lehigh has really set me up to, to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. And how was that experience like for you going from playing college basketball to, you know, trying to pursue a career professionally and then getting that opportunity? And I mean, fresh out of college, do you remember that feeling that you had when you got the contract, the call and, and everything was official? Yeah, it, it was kind of a, it was a dream come true. I had worked my whole life to play at the at the best level I could play at and for me that was playing overseas basketball and mm -hmm. uh, I was just so excited I, I really didn't care where I was going to play um, right. just knowing that I had had made that happen um, and but it's a different it's a different game over there so as an American uh, you're expected to kind of 
carry the team in some ways. And, um, you know, coming from Lehigh, we were, we were just a, a cohesive unit and we did everything as a team and everybody had their part to play. So it wasn't a, the same style of basketball. Okay. Um, so it was a challenge to learn that. But overall, it was a really great experience. Yeah, that sounds sounds fun. And, I mean, looking back, would, would you do it again? <laughs> I know it's a silly <laughs> question. <but. laughs> you know, looking back, I, I think, you know, I wish I would have played a few more years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just kind of had the itch to start my career and start something new outside of basketball. And so I retired. And <laughs> But I, I highly recommend anybody that has the opportunity to pursue that if they're on the fence to definitely – try it out and see if you like it because it's we're, we're lucky to be able to do it yeah yeah and that is something that again not everyone gets to do you you spend your entire life playing for basketball AAU basketball you know training working so hard going to tournaments flying all over for tournaments and then playing in college with hopes of reaching that level but fortunately for you you were able to get to that level and it actually has um, kind of been a good stepping stone for you into your career that you do now, as well as into an award that you won. So for those that do not know, the Patriot League actually for, has a 25-year team they come up with for women's basketball. And Erica was honored to be named to the 25-year team along with two other Lehigh players for the best women's basketball players in a 25-year span. <laughs> that is incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was a special, um, special recognition along with Ann Tierney and Jess Apollo, like you said, and um, it's it's great to be grouped with those two women. Uh, they're Lehigh royalty, so um, I, I appreciate the Patriot League recognizing me and um, Lehigh also putting my name up for that, so that's special. Nice, nice. Well, we are going to get into your career, but we did take a quick break. So when we get back, we will talk about how Je- um, just how her college basketball career, professional basketball career, and now Erica's current career all worked itself out to get her to be part of Philanthropy Playmakers. So we'll be right back after this break. Here at Freppy's Tex-Mex, you can definitely taste the freshness in our food. You should definitely come to Freppy's because it's a great place. You can bring your family, very kid friendly. All my servers are amazing, friendly people. Everyone here is just happy to serve and, and I think it shows. The thing that sets us apart is the quality and freshness of our food. And I think once you try it, you'd be coming back. I'm Joe Desario, co-owner of Freppy's Tex-Mex in Plainfield, New Jersey. When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made. 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Here, we have an attractive orange and a distinguished apple. They're too similar, but opposites. In theory, a wingman is needed. Or perhaps, a wing lemon. A friend to the orange and an acquaintance to the apple, the lemon brings the two opposites together. See, with a little fresh thinking, the universe can be surprisingly smooth.
Welcome back to the Sports Break. I'm your host, Renee Washington, here on RVNTV.TV. And since it's Friday, we do have a guest, not in studio, but Skyping in from Chicago, Erica Prosser from Chicago, formerly high women's basketball player who talked to us about her college career, her professional career overseas in Iceland, and now we have to get into her current career. So Erica, you actually founded your current job, which is Philanthropy Playmakers. Can you tell us the vision and exactly how that got started? Yeah, so um, like I said earlier, when I when I quit playing basketball, I kind of wanted to start a new career without sports, um, and so I did that for a few years working for nonprofits um, in Pittsburgh and in Chicago, and then I just had this revelation that I can combine both my passions, which is community and sports. So mm -hmm. um, I took a this executive certificate program through GW and it's uh, specific to sports philanthropy, which is a growing industry right now. Um, as we all know, athlete activism is on the rise and um, athletes and teams are expected to um, invest in their communities and, and take stands on issues. So um, I decided that I wanted to start this website to just support people that are doing work through sport, doing okay. community service through sport, um, serving their communities in different capacities. So Philanthropy Playmakers was founded about a year ago and nice. um, along with my partner. So we are just helping people um, impact lives through sport. Yeah, and talk to me about, I mean, that, that process of having to get, get an education in that field so that you can go ahead and start your own business and kind of the ups and downs of that. I mean, I'm sure there were some there was some sort of adversity that you faced or something that was a challenge along the way. Yeah, so um, I think I went back to get the executive certificate because I didn't have any formal training in nonprofit management or anything mm -hmm. like that. And I don't necessarily think it's imperative that I do, but I just wanted a little bit of that credibility and um, some academic background to what we are envisioning. For our future um, and I mean it's it's hard to, to run your own business and to um, go out on your own um, we quite honestly don't always know what we're doing okay. um, but we, we have the vision and I think that pushing forward and just um, taking steps taking risks um, has been really important for us um, I think the number one thing is that We've been so surprised with how willing people are to help and to talk to us and to provide resources and make connections. So that's been um, scary but encouraging. Yeah, yeah. And for you guys to have this vision and be able to put it into action is phenomenal. So I do have to ask, where did you get the name from? Like, how did that come up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a mouthful, philanthropy playmakers. So um, we just wanted to have, we wanted like a play on words kind of, um, you know, for us pro athletes are making plays both on and off the field. Nice. And um, we just wanted to recognize those athletes that are making a difference and making big plays in their communities and um, through philanthropy and through sports. So that's how it all came together. Yeah, it is a mouthful, but I like the name. It, it definitely <laughs> makes sense. So for... I mean, for anyone that has not seen your website or anything, where can they find more information on Philanthropy Playmakers? Yeah, it's just philanthropyplaymakers.com, and you can follow us on Twitter at Phil's, P-H-I-L, Playmakers, um, and we're on Facebook as well, Philanthropy Playmakers. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty easy, and uh, we'd love for you all to check out our site, uh, follow us on Twitter, and sign up for our newsletter so you can get all of this great information about sports and social change right into your email every day. Yeah, and I think it's such a fitting time to have you on, t on the show in general to talk about this because there is so much going on in sports right now with social change. So for those of you that are watching, again, you can follow Philanthropy Playmakers on Facebook, Instagram, check out the website. But when we get back from this break, we're going to talk a little bit more about the experiences, people you work with, the MVPs of Philanthropy Playmakers. So don't go too far. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Krista, and if you want to get into the brains of some amazing entrepreneurs, you'll want to be sure to tune into my new show called Entrepreneur State of Mind. 
Each week, I'll have a different entrepreneur to give tips to new and existing business owners on how to be more successful. Or even if you just want to learn more about entrepreneurship, get ready for 30 minutes of superb content. I can't wait. See you there. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Good morning, this is Scott Tanker, host of Breakfast with the Boss. We're part of the morning show. Our show is 9.30 to 10 a.m. each and every Thursday. Info at radiovisionnetwork.com is how you get a hold of us. And why would you want to do that? Because you want to be on this show. We talk about all sorts of businesses. We interview bosses in their small and medium-sized businesses. We ask them why they're so passionate, why they do what they do, and we find out why they're so darn good at what they do. You need to be with us each and every Thursday from 9.30 to 10 a.m. on RadioVisionNetwork.com. Please contact us. We'd love to have you on the show. There's no cost. There's no obligation. There's no pressure. But we really want to help you. Get a hold of us now. Info at RadioVisionNetwork.com. If you have a story or product that you'd like to share with our viewers as a guest on the Morning Coffee Show, please contact us at Info at RadioVisionNetwork.com. Don Santorillo is an investment advisor representative IAR with Catlin John LLC, a registered investment advisor RIA firm. DS Financial is an affiliate branch office of Catlin John LLC. Don has a bachelor of science degree in finance from Adelphia University. The information, data, and opinions contained here in this communication are provided solely for the informational or educational purposes. They are not warranted to be complete, correct, or accurate. To the extent permitted by law, Catlin John LLC does not accept any liability arising from this communication. You should not assume that any information, data, or opinions contained herein serves as a receipt of or a substitute for personalized investment advice from Catlin John LLC, its IAR, or any other investment. Past performance is not an indication of future results, and actual results may vary. Investment carries an inherent element of risk, including the risk of losing invested principles. TV. I'm your host, Renee Washington, in the studio today, joined by, via Skype, from Chicago, guest Erica Prosser, a Lehigh women's basketball graduate, Iceland overseas professional basketball player, whatever the proper term is, and now the founder of Philanthropy Playmakers, which has been around for a year now and is a growing business. So, Erica, we before the break, we're talking about how you got into your business, how it got started, getting it off the ground, but now that you have... I mean, some tremendous content on your website. You have one year under your belt. What is what are some of the great experiences that you've had? I mean, you have with your MVP specifically, your most valuable philanthropists. Yeah. So, um, like I said earlier, we're just trying to help people um, that are in this business and in this industry. And so we we've, we've established the MVP award or recognition to just recognize young professionals in the industry so it's been really awesome to just meet people we meet them on social media we have recommendations from people we interview and um, just to be able to give them a, a small platform for them to say you know I'm invested in this work and I want to make a career out of helping people through sports so um, we've met We've met people from all over the country and even internationally. We have some MVPs from Canada and the UK. So it's been um, awesome to really network and connect with people. Nice, nice. So do you get the chance to really talk to those people in depth or you know, how does yeah, that, that work? Um, we, we interview quite a few. Um, we also we, we take time to interview some executive directors and pro athletes. So. Uh, we've had some really special conversations with 
Uh, we've talked to Missy Franklin. We've talked to oh, nice. David Williams, of CEO of Make-A-Wish, um, people from ESPN, Nike, um, JJ Watt. We did an interview oh, about nice. the foundation. Yeah, so um, it's really cool now to see these people in the news making a difference. You know, obviously JJ did a, a huge um, thing for the hurricane relief. So um, it, it's been just really, really special to be able to give them more of a platform and more of an opportunity to tell their stories. Um, we interviewed CJ McCollum, a oh, nice. former cat. <laughs> yes. so, yeah, he, he's been really great about using his um, oh, yeah. his resources to, to make a difference in Portland. So Nice, nice. So I just love that idea because, again, here we try to talk about on this show people that are making a difference, whether you're a current athlete, you used to play sports, coach, whatever the case may be, some way that you're involved in sports, having a platform that you can make a change. And you guys are working specifically with social change and people that are out, you know, like J.J. Watt, out working with the hurricane relief efforts and different people like that. So what are your, I mean, some of these people that you've connected with, what are these experiences, these conversations that you're having that are really, I mean, I don't know if you ever thought you'd get to this point, but are really like, wow, here we are, we, we're actually doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, we, we're lucky to have the opportunity to speak to these people. And um, as I said earlier, it's been amazing just how, how many people will say yes to having conversations right. with us. Um, and they're excited to talk to us about the work they're doing. And, um, and it's encouraging to hear how invested they are and how much they want to contribute and how committed they are to making a difference in whatever focus area they're in. You know, we've talked to people, everybody's involved in sport in some capacity, but not everybody's cause is sport related, which I think is unique and interesting and something that people don't always consider. Um, You know, athletes have other interests and teams have other interests outside of sport. So um, sport is just the vehicle for change and whatever change you're trying to make um, can usually be done through through sport. Yes, and for people that say it is not, sports are the perfect or a great platform for making change, and that's what you're looking to do here. So why, I mean, to put you kind of on the spot a little bit, why should people get involved, or how can they get involved with philanthropy playmakers if they're interested? Yeah, well, like you just said, sport is one of the most effective vehicles for a change, and it's unifying and it's universal. You know, everybody has a team that they cheer for, I'm right. sure, or some sort of like a hometown team, or even if it's your kid's soccer team. You know, everybody is connected in one way or another, and so um, for us, we'd love for you to just sign up and and get our information into your inbox and just learn more about what teams and athletes are doing to help their communities and you know athletes tend to get a bad rap for whatever reason Mm -hmm. um but we're just here to amplify the positive stories and to support those people behind the scenes that are helping these teams and athletes to really um make an impact in the community yeah so it's kind of like the it takes a village mindset yeah. it's not just one person it's not just jj watt or just whoever missy franklin that's out in the community working but there are a lot of hands that are you know doing their best to help across sports genders ages you know it is universal with sports so yeah, exactly. that is that is encouraging to hear and that is exciting to hear because again that's something that i don't think enough people really realize the impact that sports can have beyond the playing field or court yeah Absolutely. We're here to make it known and to just share those stories. And if you know anybody that's making an impact through sport or you have somebody you're interested in hearing from an athlete or anybody like that, um, please reach out to us and we'll make our, we'll make it happen for you. Perfect. Perfect. Well, for anyone that is watching, Erica Prosser, graduate of the Lehigh Women's Basketball Program, played professionally overseas in Iceland, and now the founder of a growing business that you all need to get on board with, Philanthropy Playmakers. So thank you guys for joining us. Erica, thank you so much for joining us from Chicago. Thanks Thanks for having me. (laughs) No problem, anytime. And again, you guys can follow them on Instagram, Facebook, check out the website, find out more information because it is time that people step, step up, get involved, 
and find a way to help make a change. So I'm your host, Renee Washington, from the sports break here on rbntv.tv. Check us out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 in the morning. And I hope you have a great weekend. See you back here on Tuesday.